The Fall Forever update is launching on May 7th and I don't think I've ever been more confused and excited for an update at the same time. From solos being removed, to a brand new explore mode, to vaulting coming back but this time being awesome, this update will have you scratching your head. So sit back because this update is massive. Where do I even begin with this? Ok, let's start with some brand new social features. Now you'll be able to open a brand new social wheel which you can use to communicate with your teammates like telling them where to go which I think will be a genuine game changer for team games such as duos and squads. But do you know what is a genuine game changer for duos and squads? Piggybacking. Yes, you'll be able to jump on the back of your teammate and let them carry you to the finish line. This is not a power up mind you, this is an actual new mechanic being added to the main shows as Joe said in the discord server of all guys. Personally, my random teammates already look drunk, so I might as well carry them to the finish line, since I doubt they'll do it themselves. Next, let's talk about Explore, shall we? Explore is a brand new way to play creative rounds alone or with friends, without having to wait for everyone else to qualify to get your rewards like in solo shuffle. When you start an Explore session alone, you'll be put in a creative round with 9 other beans. From there, you can decide if you want to play a round or if you want to skip it. Yes, you can skip explore rounds if you find them too difficult or you just don't like them and get instantly put in another one without having to wait for everyone else to qualify. Same logic applies if you complete a round, you'll instantly get put into another one. And if you're playing with friends, you can hang out and explore without feeling the need to qualify since timers are now set to 30 minutes instead of 10. After you're done with an explore session, you can leave it and claim rewards like fame and crowns based on how long you played. If you like the level you played, then give it a like. The explore algorithm will be trained on liked levels to have more and more awesome levels put into it. And if your round gets in explore, but you want to change a particular section of the level, now you can update your map and the changes will automatically be pushed out in the explore mode for everyone. Now let's talk about some important changes to your player. If you're a map creator, you might need to change some things in your round before the update day on May 7th. That's because starting in 10.9, you'll be able to jump a bit higher than you used to before, possibly allowing for some bins to skip parts of your level. The lead game designer Joe did say himself that this change will enable new shortcuts on some unity rounds like Slime Climb, so look forward to that. Also, your fall guy will be able to reach its maximum speed a bit quicker now, making the game a bit more fair, especially in finals like Fall Mountain. Also, an awesome new change that's coming that I'm really happy about is about ragdolling. It can be very frustrating when your bin just randomly decides to fall to the ground and just start rolling forever, but this should now be reduced significantly. And lastly, a helpful feature is coming that will tell you where you will land if you're about to make a big jump. There will be a mark on the ground like the one in Volleyfall where the ball is, telling you where you land. You will be able to disable this in the settings if it confuses you. Now for something a bit more controversial, which I personally think is a good idea, but you can leave your own opinion in the comments. Solos is now called Knockout and will work very differently to normal solos. Instead of 40 players, it will be 32 players with 3 rounds every match. But where this starts getting a bit weird is when it comes to the vaulting system. As we know, when Folgis decided to start vaulting rounds, people weren't that happy about it. So this time, they're taking a different approach at vaulting, because as they said themselves, they don't want knockout refreshes to be like vaulting was. But what are knockout refreshes? Knockout, duos and squads will always consist of 40 rounds. While this seems like a huge downgrade from the 70 rounds or so we have now, the idea is that on a regular basis, these round pools will be refreshed with new rounds. The 40 rounds include some unity rounds, some mediatonic made creative rounds and some player made rounds. What we don't know yet is how often those round pools will be refreshed. If it is every couple of weeks then I think it's a good change that keeps the game fresh, but if it is every update for example then I do have my doubts. We will have to wait and see how this will work. Oh, and rounds not available in Knockout will be available to play in custom shows if you want to do that. Fall Guys themselves said that while keeping the round pool big sounds like a nice idea, it also makes it that so if they want to add something new to the game to keep it fresh, then it'll be very hard for you to get that new round inside of the 70 rounds they already have in the game which I can understand. 
you need to keep in mind that knockout refreshes are not just going to be round vaultings and unvaultings, they'll also be introducing new rounds to the mix every time. There's also some changes when it comes to the show selector, not really a huge surprise, I mean this update literally didn't leave a single thing as it was before. The show selector is now called the game selector and will consist of the knockout playlist, those being solos, duos and squads, and the explore mode. What about LTMs though? Here's one that I'm not really sure about, listen to what they had to say about them. Quote, Our aim with this adjustment is that we provide variety in the modes that people spend the most time playing, while also occasionally breaking back classic LTMs people love. I'm very curious to know what this means, because I honestly hated when they went from 2 LTMs a week to 1 LTM a week, and now they're saying that we'll have new LTMs occasionally. Maybe I'm reading it wrong, but if they mean that LTMs are not even going to be weekly now, then that is probably my only complaint about this update. Oh, and before I forget, races are now called courses. Yeah, that's it. We haven't talked about creative yet, but don't worry, of course we have new stuff there too, it wouldn't be an update without creative stuff, and some things are actually pretty huge. Something pretty useful to make your round better is invisible checkpoints, which are exactly what they sound like, invisible checkpoints. Also, like every update, we have a new skybox, this time being the jungle skybox from season 5. Now some quality of life changes for creative, we're getting more stickers to decorate our rounds, and you can now set the timer up to 30 minutes, and the maximum amount of certain objects you can place is higher, and I'm so glad this feature got added since it never really made sense to me why we needed a maximum objects number if we already had the budget. And by far the biggest feature in creative we're getting in this update is the rotation controller. This is a device which you can link objects to, to make them rotate and move around. This will be a true game changer, especially for survival rounds, because you can now make moving platforms to make the round more difficult, and that was the update. Phew, this is definitely the biggest update we've ever gotten and I'm not over exaggerating. There are some quality of life features like getting more fame from playing and some bug fixes but you can read the blog post to see if those affect you. I'll see you in the next video.